Hey viewers, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is probably the last plumbing video I'll do for kind of the rough end. So I wanted to show you kind of how it all turned out before I started kind of bedding pipe and filling in dirt and whatnot. Uh, I guess you can see there the equipment pad. I will do a separate video on that going over everything once it's complete. But I wanted to at least show you the rough end while the uh, trenches were all open so we can talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, mostly the ugly. But we'll start with the good first. Um, one thing that you haven't seen yet is the deck jets. So we got the deck jets ran. And what we did was we ran three quarter inch lines for four jets. You can see all the four stub ups here. Okay. And we ran them out here, stubbed them up, and then we used just some one by material, some scrap I had, drilled a hole in it. Um, so each of those holes is 22 inches on center. That way each of the deck jets is equidistant from the pool edge. And we chose to follow the contour of the pool versus doing a straight line. We figured that would look the best considering we have a free form pool versus just a straight line of jets. So that's what we did. So um, just a scrap piece of one by, drill a hole in it, and then we attached it to the uh, pool wall just with a long self tapper, actually spare screws from the shop build. So when that shop got built, all the self tapping screws they used to put the sheet metal in the purlins, I had a whole mess of them left. So used a few here. And we will actually remove, once this is all backfilled with gravel, we will remove um, those supports, you know, just because that wood doesn't need to be in the ground once the gravel's there. But uh, that's what we did for that. I also, we talked about this in previous videos, but the overflow system for the skimmers. I decided to do it, because why not? Uh, so here's the setup. If you can see down in there, there was a knockout there where that pipe is. So they give you a specific uh, measurement, which I think is 5 inches and like 3 sixteenths very specific, to create a standpipe. And what that does is as the water level in the pool rises, right, that skimmer, um, you know, bucket, right, all, that skimmer will fill up. And as it fills up too high, that standpipe will activate, right, and all the water will then start to flow down the pipe and the, the overflow. And your pool, theoretically, will never get too much water in it because it will always maintain a maximum water level. So it will never overflow. So if you have a heavy rain, you can just get all that water out, but the water has to go somewhere. So you know where this is going. So we plumbed it down there, around, and we had our kind of storm drain already there, right? So there we got a T, again, supplyhouse.com, a one inch by one inch by two inch T, right? Into a two inch, and then it's gonna connect to that four inch there. I'm waiting on a uh, two inch to four inch hub uh, to make that connection, and then it connects into the storm drain. This gets fun, trying to source all these parts. You learn a lot about what the different pipes are by doing this. So that's all Schedule 40, right? So I needed to adapt Schedule 40 to corrugated. That's not easy. What I had to do is actually adapt Schedule, get this adapter, which is Schedule 40 to um, thin wall pipe. And what that, uh, and then that thin wall drainage pipe, it's like Schedule 30 or Schedule 20, I don't know what it is. A thin wall drainage pipe and then from there you get an adapter from the thin wall drainage pipe to a four inch corrugated and then i did four inch corrugated up to six inch corrugated and then a six inch d so that's how you do it it's a crazy process but it will work and all that excess water will go down the storm drain now the other what's the other piece the other piece is talking about the trench all the way up to the uh to the equipment pad so here's how everything came together this trench is a nightmare. We talked about this, right, in the previous video, okay? I got it all together. It's not pretty. I hate it. I, if I can, this is the, you know, every project you have, what you do different in your regrets. This is my biggest regret, is not thinking about this trench more heavily. Digging it down a little deeper, digging it a little wider, and really planning out that corrugated, that corrugated line. I don't know what, how would I actually do it, because there's no way I, I would have to actually have those guys you know, not cross. So I'd probably go deeper with that corrugated line up here. Uh, that way I could bury it and still have a deep enough trench to do all this piping. But we work with what we got and this is what we got. So all these pipes stacked in here. You can see I've got my return manifold. Again, you see lots of stuff still disconnected, right? I'm, I'm kind of filling, kind of filling the pieces in the middle. Lots of stuff disconnected. Um, but there's a return manifold for the future waterfall that'll be ca that'll be capped the slide which is an inch and a half the rest are two inch 
and then the return jet, and then skimmer two, skimmer one, right? And then that is, here's our drain catch, right? So we talked about doing the uh, kind of a back, not backwash, but being able to drain, manually drain water out of the pool if I needed to, right? So that is where that kind of catches in right there. And that that's our, our Y into our storm drain, right? And in hindsight, now that I'm thinking about it, I should have got another Y like that that reduces down to four instead of getting that six and all those adapters. I should have done that. But I'm, I can't remember if I didn't, if I just spaced on that or if they were out of stock of those and I got what I got. Anyway, so there's that. So that is basically, that adapts down to a two and a half inch. Could be a two, but I had two and a half. I did two and a half. And then I have a T there now. That's new. I wasn't playing on that originally. It was just going to be this three-way diverter valve there after the filter where I could just dump water out of the pool. But I, I teed it in there because I wanted to pick up the filter drain that you can see there. That th This filter has a drain on it. And I'll go over all this more detail in the uh, equipment pad video. But when you change out the filters, you need, a, you need a drain the whole filter assembly. And so it just had a drain plug. Well, I that, we can't just have that, right? So put in an inch and a half male, male adapter and we're gonna have a valve there too. That way I can just throw that valve and manually drain it again, drain the waste out to the creek. Perfect. Uh, other things you'll see here, right? We got the our sacrificial anode. We're using a salt system and we have steel walls. So we want to be able to mitigate any sort of corrosion. Not that it's a huge deal, but you know, it's possible. So what that does is that will, it will that will basically corrode sacrificial anode, right? Just like you have in your water heaters, water tanks. Um, that will corrode first and that is easily replaceable. So we got that just after the filter. Um, oh, other thing I did. So future plans include a heater, right? But heaters are expensive and I don't wanna buy one now. So what I did, hang on, pardon the framing. I got a cardboard box. Is that gonna stay with the wind? Okay, back in, here you go. I got a cardboard box and as you can see, I mocked out, you see the, the two inlets and outlets there on the, on the uh, the box. I measured that out basically for the dimensions of the heater that I plan on getting, right? Hayward propane heater. And so then what I did when I'm running on my pipes, I'm going to do a loop. So that pipe's going out. It's going to have two 90s and do a 180 back to that pipe. And then that way, when I want to do the heater, I can just cut the ends off and literally hook it up. So uh, run it a little long. That way I can cut it back. Make It'll make adding a heater so much easier. So if you're, when you're doing this, Think about that kind of stuff. Here's other considerations. I've got big long around pipe here and it's gonna have another long around pipe here. Leave yourself some working room because for like the salt cell and other sensors, you gotta be able to, to tap into these pipes with, with stuff as you need. If I wanna add in uh, pH balancing, so auto injection of muriatic acid or CO2 to lower the pH automatically, that kind of stuff. You need access to the pipes to be able to put the stuff in, and right? so. We're going to have a lot of extra space, and you'll see this whenever uh, whenever the pad's all done. Um, we can talk about that in more detail, but that's where we're sitting right now. Uh, and we got the three-quarter lines for the deck jets, right, in a manifold. And here we have a pressure equalization loop. So you can see here, this is just one continuous loop and then a two-inch out to the rest of the system. But you need that. You want your deck jets to be as good as you can. You need, one, a pressurization loop like that, and two individual valves those valves are not for opening for turning them on and off those are for tuning so we're going to have one master valve to control the jets on and off and each of those four valves we can adjust the pressure in the jet to make it hit exactly where we want in the pool and then we can kind of set it and forget it so uh that's about it um hope you all enjoying the video series we are getting close uh the videos here are pretty close to live as far as you know a few weeks behind as far as the actual progress of the pool but with any luck uh we'll be swimming in september if it's warm enough we'll at least be able to so uh, fingers crossed but uh, we'll keep the videos coming uh, if you like this content and everything i i uh i bring to you uh please like share subscribe uh it really helps out the channel uh also if you're shopping on amazon you can click the link in the show notes and that is my amazon affiliate link and then from there anything you buy on amazon uh, the channel will get a, a kickback from that. It costs you absolutely nothing extra, but it does help support the channel and bring you the content uh, that I'm doing. So I thank you for that. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.